I am here down in Tamil Nadu visiting some of the most inspiring and innovative water projects across the country of India. I started in Chennai and traveled up the Kaveri River Delta all the way to the city of Coimbatore. I met with an organization that was restoring the lakes of the city that were built by the ancient Chola dynasty. About a thousand years ago, there were massive floods in the paddy growing areas. Those areas were ruled by the Cholas those days. So the Chola king sent a regiment over here to find out why the floods are occurring. What they discovered was the sudden flash of water coming in caused the floods down in Tanjavur area. During the monsoon, there is heavy flow and they built about 30 lakes over here and about 30 and 30 and odd anikats. Anikats are small dams. So when one lake filled, the excess of water over there, that lake reached downstream. This is the first dam that's built. It's called Chitre Chavadi. From there, water flows in two directions, the left bank canal and the right bank canal. And these lakes were part of why the city of Coimbatore was there, located in this place and was able to thrive. The Cholas, they are very good at water managers. They dug these lakes by hand. They made sure that the water flowed through gravity. They built check dams to divert the water to these lakes. They built these huge canals to carry the water, to, to divert the water from the lakes to all the other lakes also. They interlinked all these canals and these uh, anikats. So once one filled up, the overflow reached the other one and then so on and so forth, till it reached the Kaveri River. This is the third anikat in the uh, watershed that is built by the Cholas. This is called the Chitra Chavadi Anikat. There's a diversion here, the river continues downstream, whereas there is a small canal which offshoots from this dam. It feeds about seven lakes downstream. In addition to that, it feeds all the agricultural lands. There are sluices along the way, and these sluices, they block the water and they divert it to the farmer's fields. So many farmers here in this area are dependent on this water. There are 30 similar types of anikats downstream. All these uh, lakes were built with the intention of giving water to agriculture. And once the water finishes the agricultural lands, it goes back into the river. The whole design is like that. They put the lake in a higher plane, the agricultural land will be in a lower plane, and water flows by gravity. 2015, 16 and 17, the rains had failed. There was a huge uh, drought in Coimbatore at that time. There was no water in the taps. The bores had gone very deep. You had to tap water for 700, 800 feet down. It was going towards zero water at that period. Something had to be done. So he was the one who started this. This is Mr. Manigandan. He is the person who started this NGO, which is called Kovai Kulangal Padugapu Amipu. That means Coimbatore Lakes Protection Organization. Kovai Kulangal aim is to clean every lake, to clean every lake and bring it back to its original glory. Problem was, these lakes fell into disrepute. Slowly, Coimbatore became an industrial town, huge industrial town. Along with that came pollution. Along with pollution, it has become a dump yard with filth and muck and sewage and things like that. And also, the thorny bushes took over. Because there was no water at all, the canals were not cleaned. So the water was not reaching the lakes. Lakes were neglected in Coimbatore. So he started work in, in this direction with the help of volunteers. We have a volunteer base of nearly 30,000 people. 30,000 volunteers, registered volunteers, cleaning the lakes, desilting the lakes, reviving the lakes. They are also cleaning the uh, canals leading to these lakes. So far, we've revived four big lakes. We've, we've revived about nine big ponds. So something like what the Cholas did, we tried to get back to what it was in those days. This was the first project. When they started it, there was no name at all. They didn't have any name. They didn't have any finance. They didn't have any backing. But slowly with their work, they got the backing, they got the finance, they got the work done. Work was carried on with the help of JCBs for one full month, for four weeks. And 265 acres of lake, they desilted it. After that, they desilted canal, which is about 11 kilometers from upstream to this lake, which supplies water to four lakes. And after desilting, after the first rains in 2018, this lake has filled up. From that date, every year we've received rain and this lake has filled up to capacity. Because of that, Agriculture is flourishing in this area. Bore wells have received a lot of water. There's no water problem in this area at all during the past four years.
This is the year 2015, yeah. and this shows the extent of water bodies throughout the year in 2015 right. before the work was done right. by the KKPA in Coimbatore. Right. This is a time slice, and you're going to see some snapshots with absolutely no water across any pond, right? Mm. So those are the months of the year where it's completely dry. Right. As compared to that, when you look at the other one in 2022, so these are all those lakes in Coimbatore. Yeah. And this is 2022. Okay. So 2022, you have the outline of the water body and the radar imagery showing when is the water there and how long is the water there, right? But when you contrast that with the other one, just what you can see, first of all, is that the amount of water surface area is a lot less compared to 22. And you will see some water bodies entirely missing. They're just not active. Yeah. So, so this one here was entirely missing. Yeah. This one was much, was barely there. Mm -hmm. So this right here, this satellite data literally proves the work of the KKPA here That's in right. the Quimitor area. Yep. Once water came in, it helped the farmers. Once water came in, the depth of the bore wells, which was 700, 800 feet, came to 100 feet and 200 feet like that. So water levels were high. During the past four years, we made a study. Even 10 kilometers away from here, people have water in the bow wells. 10 kilometers from here. There's a place called Malumuchambati. It had no water at all before we did this. And after we did this, they're, they're getting water regularly over there. They've reported that after they restored Velalor Lake, uh, which was the first lake they restored, literally 10 kilometers downstream with no other major work done in the in this area, people's wells were going up. Absolutely. So what, this is just what we're seeing on the surface. That's right. What we're not seeing below ground, the changes in groundwater must be equally as dramatic. Absolutely. I think there's strong reason to feel optimistic about it. The strong reason to see the, the, the actual evidence on the surface that shows that a lot more water is staying for a lot longer. And as a result, there is strong uh, reasons to believe that the aquifers are getting recharged. After cleaning this lake, the government gave us permission to plant uh, trees in this lake bundle. It's a Miyawaki urban forest. It's quick growing. We planted more than 10,000 trees over here, here and on the roadside as, as well. A lot of reptiles have moved in, a lot of insects have moved in, a lot of small animals have moved in. Butterfly Society have identified 101 species of butterflies here. Larva. This is also a first plant for butterflies. Oh yeah. The bird society here, they, they, they've started a study and they've identified 154 species of migratory birds which have come and flocked here in November, December. What was the years that you planted the first to second? First one was in uh, 2018. Okay. Cherry, cherry. cherry. Oh. This uh, Mayawake plantation was planted last June during World Environmental Day by our volunteers. This plantation is hardly six months old. 2,000 trees in their first plantation, 2,000 trees here, and 250 varieties. We want diversity, we try to get as many species as possible. Here, mostly native, 100% native. The thorny version of the Moringa plant. The normal thing doesn't have thorns, but this one has thorns. So, this is a medicinal plant, actually. Chew it or no? I can't smell. Chew it? Oh, smell. not eaten. No, 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 no. Just like ginger, they use the, oh, the roots. Root. The roots. Okay, so it's like ginger flower. Bitter, bitter, bitter. bitter. Very bitter. Very bitter. This okay. is very bitter. This is good for They use in stuff. curries and things like that. Oh, they use in okay. curries. Cleans the intestines completely. Okay. They yeah. use of prayers also. I know, like a prayer bead, like, like a mala. That's how the Japa Mara. Even uh, Mother Teresa used it. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh. This. Uh, oh. The fruit of that. 
Yeah. Pull to the body. Okay. Will this make more hair grow on my head? Modi wala Raman kya karan? He's found that there are 900 small ponds in the Coimbatore watershed. That's when you start from the Western Ghats, right down here. There are 900 small, small ponds, three acres, four acres, ten acres like that, and it's all spread out. All of them have become dump yards. So slowly, he's mapped all those, and we are slowly going to revive those uh, ponds. It's hard to explain to people <laughs> in America what. Indian, What's happening? What is that? The Indian roads are like. What? Yeah, in America, you when you honk your horn at somebody, it is, I think it's so. rude. It's very rude. Okay. Yeah, it's very rude. Here, it is courteous. <laughs> you got to do it. Yeah, in the back of the truck, it says, "Please honk, use horn." You know? This is one of them. This is the ponds. So one of them. It's 2.89 acres. The original depth was over there. You can see the tree line over there. And we've taken out soil from that for them and put it on the bank over here. And it got filled up during the rains last year to the extent that elephants have come and drunk water from this. We can see the elephant uh, marks over there. You can see the footmarks of elephants. To find these old water bodies, the old pattern that was established, you know, a thousand years ago, these ponds, these canals, and this this brilliant water system was put in by ancient people. And here, the KKPA. Has made a great effort to actually find these old patterns where the ponds have silted in, garbage has been dumped, and vegetation's grown back up. And they found these ponds, reestablished the ponds and the canals, and reconnected this hydrologic system. But they have thirty thousand volunteers. So this isn't just like a small organization. This is like an army of volunteers. That are dedicated to restoring the water systems and the hydrology, the water quality, and the natural resources of this area. So, I'm very fortunate to have been able to spend the day with you all. Thank you very much. We are fortunate to have you here, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, this is a good time. I have some. I have some gifts to to give you. One second. These are hazelnuts. So this is special nuts. From Oregon, from where we live here, and then um, my my university, uh, the mascot, you know, the mascot of the university is a is an animal called the beaver. Oh, yeah. and the beaver is like a water harvesting animal built. It's a pond building animal, right? So this. And they eat it. So this is a, a it's the beaver. It's also nail clippers. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and keychain. Keychain. So this, yeah, to remember. There. Wait for that. We brought many. Net power. This morning we saw the. We saw the. We saw the bees. They made a. Yeah, like. Has made. This morning, saying she fat, and it's a double bead for your wife. Thank you. Thank you. Then made. One for you, or another one for you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. All right, here you get back with. Are you ready to transform deserts, create lush backyards, and feed communities? In my almost 30 years as a permaculture designer traveling the world, I've put everything I learned into Oregon State University's online permaculture design course, or PDC. The PDC and PDC Pro are the ultimate ways to begin mastering permaculture. Me and my team guide you through over 20 assignments with more than 100 hours of top quality video lectures and resources, all focused on developing your own property or project throughout the course. You'll get personalized feedback from a dedicated instructor in a small group setting. People are always asking me, "How can I be part of the solution?" This is your starting point. Check the link below for upcoming courses and join us in creating a better world for everyone. See you in class.